Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna cut and break saw. This is a special saw with a dual blade head on it. The customer complaint is that it's hard to start. So anytime I get a concrete saw and it's hard to start, the first thing I do is, I, oh look at that, the bearings are bad. I pull on the cord to see if the blade's turning while I'm pulling the cord. And here you can see that I can't stop the blade from turning while I'm pulling the cord. So there's something going on in the drive system on here. I will open this up and before I do any work on that drive system, I want to make sure that the engine's good. You know, these things are subjected to concrete dust all the time. So they tend to have a shorter life than other equipment. I mean, they are working under the, the worst possible conditions. So I'm going to pop this spark plug out and take a look in there and, and make sure everything's good to go before we spend any money on stuff that we can't use. So this, this concrete saw with the dual blades, the idea is that you can plunge cut into a wall, let's say, uh, up to 16 inches deep. You're not limited by the arbor like you would be on a regular concrete saw. You can only cut a little less than half the diameter of the blade. Well, because there's two blades side by side, you can plunge cut just as deep as you could with a chainsaw. So looking in the cylinder, it's clean. I mean, there's wear in there, but there's no scoring going on. So we're happy with that. Spark plug looks good. We'll put that back in. We got our air filter back on. Now let's look at taking this thing apart. So there's a water line right here, and you, you're going to want to use water when you're cutting with this, if at all possible. It'll keep the dust down. And then on the, on the drive end, you have two retaining nuts, just like you would on a chainsaw. It's kind of attached the same way. And there's also another screw that's holding this cover in place. That cover should come off of there now. And the tensioner is built into that cover as well. So now you'll be able to see that when I turn the clutch drum, the clutch is turning with it and so is the cutter head. You know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. That clutch should spin free from the drum. So that we're going to take the, the cutting blades off right now. There's a single nut, or bolt, I'm sorry. It holds the blades in place. These things are kind of unique because the pulley for the belt is built into the blade. When you put the two halves together, you end up with a V pulley. There you go. And that's what the belt runs around. And you'll see when we put this back together, you got to be careful. Now, look at this end. The seal came out of the bearing and the bearing shot, so we're going to have to replace that as well. These are two separate problems that um, the one didn't cause the other. One end, you just got a bad bearing. The other end, you got concrete powder jamming everything up. And along with that concrete powder, it gets into the, the bearings on the drum end. And I see a lot of bearings on that end going out. So we got the cutter arm off. Now let's take a look at this clutch. I'm holding the off switch in the off position and buzzing the clutch off. And that came off pretty easy. Sometimes when things are locked up on this end, they don't come apart that easily. And now I'm just checking to see if all the, the flyweights on the clutch hub are loose or if they're bound up from concrete slurry. Those bearings still turn, but they, they're dragging a lot. And it popped right off of there. That doesn't always happen either. Sometimes they need a two-jaw puller to get that pulley off of there. 
So I was able to turn the drum while it was on the crankshaft, but I can't turn the bearing with my finger. And there's actually two bearings pressed into that hub. So we got our new one. And you can buy just the bearings individually, or you can buy it assembled like this. Yeah, that bearing turns nice. Yeah, the other one wouldn't spin like that. So after the drum and bearings are in place, there's a washer. And then the clutch goes on. Just a final inspection. And then we'll just buzz it down into place. See all that dust that blew out of there? Alright, we're done on that end. Now on this end to remove this head bearing, we need a special tool, and it's shipped with the saw when you buy a new one. Uh, these things can be really tight. And I found that uh, I had to make a tool, so I took one of those tools and cut the handle off of it and then welded it to a plate of steel and welded a nut to that plate. So I made something that I could put an impact on and kind of rattle these things loose. This works a lot better than having to disassemble everything and heat it up and then try and back it out. So there's our hub for our bearing. And there's a little little groove there that that sits in. I'm just going to clean the schmutz out of there. So I'm trying to remember, I think that uh, between this bearing and the clutch drum, we're at about $100 in parts. Now that bearing should just pop right out of there. It's, it's a press fit, but it's not, you know, hydraulic press fit. So I just set that hub in the vise so I, it would hold it a little stouter than my hand did. And tapped it a few times and the bearing came right out. But to put it back together, I don't want to pound on that bearing. So I'm just going to warm up this retainer ring, get it to expand a little bit, and the bearing will drop in there a lot easier. And you'll see, I probably didn't get the thing hot enough because this should have just dropped right in. It just needs a little bit of tapping. I'm all right with that, but not pounding on it with a hammer. And then I'm just putting a little bit of lubricant on the threads just to make sure I can tighten this thing down to where it's supposed to be. There we go. Now I'm not going to use the impact to rattle that back on because I know the threads are decent. Ooh, hot stuff. Because I know the threads are decent, I can just crank it in by hand. That'll do it. That bearing feels good in there. Alright, let's put this cutter arm back on. Kind of goes on like a chainsaw bar. So I'm going to move the belt off of the end to gain some slack on the clutch end and be able to wrap that belt around the clutch and drop it in the pulley. And once I've done that, then I can push the belt back up centered into place. Now here's a special nut for these blades. And it's got two pins on it. So that it locks the blades together. We put the nut through one blade, 
put the blade on the hub, put the second blade on, getting the two holes lined up in the two pins, and then we can put the bolt on. Now what I found with these is that you don't want to just crank that nut down. You'll notice that when I rotate this, it's, it wobbles. It's not centered right now. And that's because you're trying to squeeze that belt in between the pulleys. So what I found is that if you snug it and then rotate it, you'll see that I'm able to, I picked up some slack there. Then I rotate it some more. Snug it up. Rotate it. And this is just walking the belt up the groove of the pulley. And then allowing me to compress the pulley, the two halves of the blades. And once I get to a point where it's it won't snug up anymore, then I just tighten it down. I'm just going to stick a pin in here to hold these blades while I tighten it. And then I want to do a final check and make sure that the blades are spinning evenly. No wobble. Yeah, and it looks good. All right, now, here's our cutter arm, and there's our cover, just like a clutch cover on a chainsaw. We get the cover in place, but uh, the two stud bolt nuts are loose. Now, underneath, there's a hole that you can put your finger in there, and you can feel the tension of the belt. So I'm just going to snug up these nuts. And this is, you know, the same way you're tightening the chain on a, a saw. Run the tensioner in, check the tension on the belt. And you want these things pretty tight. You'll see I'm lifting up on the, the tip of the blade there, just like I would on a chainsaw bar. And then we'll tighten it up. So how tight do you tighten it? Um, pretty tight. You want that belt nice and tight. So we'll get this thing tightened up and then we'll give it a test run. What I'm really looking for is that when I pull the cord, the blades aren't turning. And I'll check that again at the end. So that's all I got for you on the Husqvarna cut and break head bearing and clutch drum replacement. Thanks for watching. Later. <laughs>